In this video, I'm going to show you how to improve the easiest swing stretch I've ever seen by using AI and data science. I'm money engineer and over the last few months, I've helped traders get funded and get their first payouts using trading data. So in this video, I'll break down the easiest swing strategy ever, how to use decision trees as a trader, which is a very powerful machine learning algorithm, and how data science can help us increase our win rate using a trading journal. So first thing first, I'll tell you why I think most traders are unprofitable. I've worked with a lot of students and there's a common factor I see between all the traders who don't make it is that they don't professionally journal their trades and I'm saying professionally in details. I have a one hour interview on my channel with a student who's now a six figure funded trader and he goes in details about that if you want to check it out. That's why today I wanted to break down what AI and data science can do for your trading and actually improve Eros trading strategy. And not only that. I was able to find one trading rule that once I applied on top of this strategy, I was able to go from a 57% win rate and 7 hour return to an 80% win rate and 19 return. That means cutting by half all of my losses and getting 12 or more at the same time. And all of this was by using one simple rule I found thanks to data science. But first, let's go over the strategy. Iras is another fellow Trader Canadian here. So if you're listening, Ira, beautiful strategy that you have there. And it's a very, very simple strategy. But the thing is, as you're getting experience as a trader, you can appreciate a simple strategy. So the first thing that you'll need is an indicator because I saw in his chart, he was using a fractal which shows the highs and the lows. And he's using a custom one. So I'll try to find one that's similar. And I think I found one. It's not exactly the same as his. But if you go on the indicators and you type fractals, ML, this one by Mr. Tian Vien. So once you have that, there are some modifications that we need to do because in this case, he has two levels of fractals, the highest highs and then the lowest lows. So to do that, you will first need to remove the top and the bottom. You'll only use one level of fractal here. And I also like to put them in black because it's uh, better fits my charts. And then once you come here, this is the level. Those numbers are just the number of candles considered before drawing a fractal. So for instance, let's say if I'm putting 10, you will see the number of fractal decrease, as you saw. So I think the best number, like if error is able to tell us, I think it will be something like five. And it was very similar to what it was using. So once you're here, you are on the four hours. So as I said, this is a swing trading strategy. So when I'm doing a video, I never cherry pick my trades. I always try to go into recent price action. And if you saw in my previous videos, I was always going to last week's price action. Since this is a swing strategy, I have to go back a little bit further behind because uh, I need more time, right? So once you're here, all you need to do is find the high and the low. All this strategy is about is about following the four hour trend. And as you saw, currently we're very bearish. You can see that we had this low that was a fractal. So that's why it's so useful to have fractals because it's very objective. You can see when we have a breakout structure or not. And you can see that we continue to break those lows. And then what happened right there? We had a sweep of those highs, relative equal highs, and then a continuation lower, leaving behind a fair value gap. So I don't know if this is a very hard rule on his strategy to have a fair value gap, but I can say with confidence that once you see a fair value gap on the four hour, it gives your trade a much higher probability of being a winning trade. So we have the fair value gap and then all you have to do is draw your fib. So in his video, he was using mainly the 71% fib for the entry. And I saw in other videos, he was using the 75 because this allowed a clean one to three risk to reward ratio. So you can play around with that. But just to make sure I'm always tagged in my trade, I prefer to go with something more conservative like the 71. And then you can just put your trade. So the stop at the high, so that's the 36 pips stop loss, which is very nice. And then usually if you enter on the 71, you'll have like a one to 2.5 at the lows. Let's see how this one goes. So beautiful reaction there. To be honest, we had this new that was formed there. So I should have moved my fib like that. But you can see that overall, this is the same trade idea. We went below. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to gather some data. I think I'll go until September here to find uh, more data since this is a swing strategy. And then we'll use AI more precisely, decision trees and feature engineering to be able to improve this strategy. And I'll be back. All right, so I've backtested multiple weeks now and I was able to find seven trades in total and you can see them on the chart. 
and you can see that a lot of them were very deep in profit so that's very nice and that's one of the best upsides to swing strategies but let's just use data science to see how we could have made this strategy even better so to do that you will absolutely need a real trading journal so in here i'm using the notion template i built for my students and the big difference with this notion template which no other notion template out there has is that we're able to apply data science concept to this journal so i'm not just talking about the day of the week or the time you took the trade i'm talking about the real details very deep and if you didn't already watch my video about feature engineering feature engineering is pretty much how you can break down one strategy into very specific things that you can objectively study to see the impact of them in your trading and those are multiple ones we're studying in my community and today i was able to find one feature that now once that was applied to this strategy was able to cut by half my losses and then even give me 12 or more in return so you can see that the raw data here is that we had a 57 percent win rate with a sum of 7R, which is, to be honest, very, very good. Like when you're getting close to 60, 70% win rate, that's amazing. And you should stick to what you're doing. And as I said, because I was always going with a 2.5, this is the, the sum that we got. But what was this feature I was able to find and study in this strategy, which allowed me to increase my win rate? Well, if we go back down, this is the feature analysis part. You can see that it was by looking at the daily trend because in this case, what's nice is that you're only using one time frame, right? You're only using the four hour to take your trade, and that's very nice. However, what if on top of it, you're adding one other time frame, the daily time frame? So if we look at the data, let me open up my table. This is what you would get. I saw in my data that if I was simply following the trend, so if I was only buying in a daily bullish trend and selling in a bearish daily trend, this is the type of result I would have gotten during my back test. Of course, as always, when I'm doing those videos, I'm not gathering 100 trades. This is where you come in and you do your own backtest and your own journaling. What I'm doing here is just proof of concept and guide you on how to journal and gather data. So I saw that in total, I had seven trades. Five of them were with the daily trend and two of them were against the daily trend. And you can see that all the trades that were against the daily trend failed. And not only that, the second discovery that I was able to see is that all the successful trade, which were with the daily trend, eventually went to 5R plus in return. So that's a huge potential here that you're sleeping on. And so the way you're taking profit is something else that you definitely need to study. And I have a free script that I coded myself that's able to tell you exactly the best way to do that, which you can find in my channel. So if we're looking at the daily, you can see that from May 2024 to around to October, the trend was very, very bullish. You see that those lows were never violated and we kept on getting new highs every time. But once this low was formed and broken, we came into a bearish market. If we go back to the trade, especially in September, if I was only focused on taking buys, I could have sell myself those two losses. And you can see that the only long trade that I took during September was actually perfect. And it went to a one to eight so beautiful trade right there and then you can see that since october since we came into a bearish market all of those trades were short trades and all of them went in a lot of profit and that's exactly what you should be doing with your data you need to break down the strategy see how you can objectively study some features in your trading and once you have all of those different features this is when you can combine them using a decision tree and decide if you're supposed to take a trade or not Let's now cover how you can apply that to your own trading using a decision tree. So decision trees are a type of algorithm, more specifically a machine learning algorithm, which is part of AI. And what you could simply do is once you have enough data and you have enough features, this is the type of thing you can build. So let's say the first question you can ask yourself in the morning, you come into the charts and you say, OK, what is the daily trend? It could be either bearish, bullish, or you can also write consolidating if you want to add that in your journal. To make it very simple, in my case, I only wrote two choices. And then for each of them, you will have a specific probability. To be very simple, I'll just write that the probability of each one is 50-50. But depending on your strategy and the different market conditions that your data is in, you will have different answers for that. But overall, it should be around the same thing. Then there's the second thing you can ask yourself, and this is what we just did in this video. You look at the four-hour trend. 
what is the trend on the full hour? And this is where things get interesting, is when you start stacking the different features together. And then at that point, it can once again be bearish or bullish. And let's say we took this branch of the decision tree. Logically, if the daily is trending bearish and the four hour is also trending bearish, then you have a much higher chance of having a winning trade if you're taking a sale at that point. But if the daily is trending bearish, but the four hour is trending bullish, then you have a lower chance of having a successful trade. Same thing for bullish and bullish. You have a higher chance of having a good trade if you're following the trend. And if the two are contradictory, then you'll have a lower chance. But you can go as deep as you want and look, for instance, also at the one hour. And what if all the time frames that you have are all in sync? Then you theoretically have a higher chance of having a winning trade. But all the priorities that you see here, you don't just create them. Those are based on the data that you're gathering for your specific strategy. And just like my case, I have some journals that have around 400, 500 trades. And for the different type of feature that you're studying, you can go back to all my other videos. But what if instead of looking at the one hour trend at that point in the decision tree, you look at the presence of a fair value gap on the 15 minute. This could be a completely different feature. What if you're looking at the time of the day? Is it the silver bullet time? This is clearly an exponential problem. As you're adding more variables, which are in those cases features, the possibility are enormous. Like you can combine different things and have amazing strategies at that point. And this is why we focus on, on the community. So that's the type of thing you should definitely study for yourself. And uh, that's how I was able to increase the win rate of this strategy specifically using one simple rule, following the daily trend. So hopefully I was able to give you some value here. I'm doing my very best to try to educate traders about that because I feel like that's something that's missing. This is what I learned while I was working in private equity. This is what I'm trying to provide to the community now. But if you hate swing trading, here's a very easy day trading strategy you should definitely check out in this video.